welcome in this session i am going to start discussing various groups of uh, kingdom plantae and before i start discussing we will see the overall classification of uh, kingdom plantae right so here kingdom plantae is divided into two sub kingdoms so that is a uh, sub kingdom cryptogamy and sub kingdom phenirogamy so these are two groups that is uh, sub kingdom cryptogamy and sub kingdom phenirogamy so coming to this uh, cryptogamy so this group will include seedless plants so it includes seedless plants whereas the phenirogamy it includes seeded plants so it includes seeded plants okay and the sub kingdom cryptogamy is divided into three divisions is divided into three divisions okay so one division thallophyta so division thallophyta and then division bryophyta so division bryophyta and then division pteridophyta So these are three divisions and under the thallophyta we have one subdivision. So that is algae. Right. So these are okay the three divisions under cryptogamy. Okay, so thallophyta that includes only one subdivision that is algae. Then coming to the phenylogamy so under this it has one division that is spermatophyta so it has uh, one division spermatophyta and uh, this uh, spermatophyta it includes uh, two subdivisions so it includes two subdivisions subdivision gymnospermae and subdivision angiospermae so subdivision gymnospermae and subdivision angiospermae and out of base okay so these angiosperms are the only flowering plants so out of uh, all uh, the entire group of this uh, kingdom plantae the only plants that are able to uh, produce flowers are these angiosperms and right this uh, subdivision angiospermae has two classes it has two classes class okay dicotyledony okay so dicotyledony so these uh, dicotyledony of course in short we call they are dicot plants so they are dicots okay and coming to <coughs> right the class okay monocotyledony So here right so dicotyledony and monocotyledony so there are okay two classes so this is uh, monocotyledony in short we call monocots 
monocots okay right so this is the overall classification of uh, kingdom planted so and i'm going to discuss among this okay so the groups algae then bryophytes and then pteridophytes and then gymnosperms and then angiosperms right so all will come under this uh, five groups okay so algae bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms are the five groups of uh, plants and i am going to discuss in detail about the algae first then bryophytes and we will see up to angiosperms okay so that is the overall classification which i have shown here of kingdom planted right so now uh, let's begin with the first group of plants so that is algae right let's see its uh, first point so these are chlorophyll containing so these are chlorophyll containing plants so they contain chlorophyll and able to perform the process of photosynthesis so they are chlorophyll containing plants and uh, so these are simple thalloid okay so uh, in this case thalloid uh, whose uh, plant body is not differentiated into uh, root stem and leaves we don't see uh, in case of algae no roots no stems and no leaves so such a body we call it the thalloid so they are simple thalloid and autotrophic plants okay so here i'll just mention undifferentiated plant body so undifferentiated plant body okay which means uh, it is not differentiated into uh, roots stems okay leaves and so when the plant body doesn't show any such differentiation then we call such plant body as a thalloid plant body so the algae are simple they are thalloid and, <coughs> and autotrophic plants okay then they are either okay fresh water so it, uh, which i mean uh, they may live in okay fresh water uh, they live in fresh water right or we will see also in so either fresh water or marine water or terrestrial so terrestrial which means uh, on land you may find these plants growing in fresh waters okay right so in this case uh, that will be rivers okay lakes ponds etc so these are all the fresh water bodies and marine waters the seas and oceans you will find and terrestrial that is land so you will see these algae growing on okay i mean in fresh waters in marine waters and on okay uh, terrestrial that is on land then right so they occur in variety of uh, habitats like the moist stones they occur on variety of habitats i already told you habitats means the location where the organism lives so that we call it uh, okay habitat so 
they occur on variety of uh, habitats like like moist stones like uh, moist stones so the uh, right so moist stones you will see uh, these algae uh, growing on them right and you will also find on moist soils and uh, woods etc so moist stones moist soils on moist woods you will find okay uh, so th these algae growing on so they occur okay i mean in uh, a variety of uh, habitats like these moist stones and okay the next one some occur in association with the fungi so in the last uh, chapter we have seen okay the lichens so those uh, have uh, the algae and fungi living together so some of these algae they occur in association with the okay fungi and we call them lichens so they are called lichens the next one now some algae some other algae are also found in association with the animals okay some other are found in association with the in association with the other animals okay are found in association with the other animals like we see them growing on uh, uh, growing on sloth bears growing on sloth bears okay right so some you find in association with the uh, okay fungi lichens okay and some other are found in association with the uh, other animals means they grow on the body of uh, animals like we see some algae growing on the body of a uh, sloth bear then so coming to uh, type their size coming to the size they range from microscopic they range from microscopic uh, okay so means so tiny they are like uh, we see uh, chlamydomonas so they range from microscopic unicellular form it's like uh, chlamydomonas so chlamydomonas is uh, minute so it is a very i mean microscopic unicellular okay that lives in water so they range from microscopic unicellular forms like chlamydomonas to massive plant bodies to massive plant bodies plant bodies okay so like kelps so kelps of course they are very big and multicellular okay so i'll mention here so they are multicellular and okay so very big they grow in the waters okay so in the marine waters or in fresh waters you will see growing them okay uh, to a very large size so coming to the size i told that these algae will range from a uh, microscopic unicellular to a very big that is massive massive means very big okay uh, plant bodies like we see in case of uh, kelps so kelps also are algae right so the next one uh, coming to <coughs> their form so there we may see some as filamentous okay or colonial so you see some algae are filamentous so some algae are filamentous like we see in case of uh, eulothrix and uh, 
pyrogyra okay so etc so in case of eulotrix and spirogyra you will find the filamentous uh, structure okay so here uh, the filamentous means which you will see okay something like this so the cells will be attached one to one to form a okay long chain of cells so in that case uh, we call it filamentous and here so here you will see in case of spirogyra the chloroplast will be uh, right uh, will be having a spiral shape so because of that it gets the name okay spirogyra okay so this i have shown here is spirogyra so with its uh, chloroplast spiral shape in spiral shape okay right then i told some are colonial forms some other are colonial forms example volvox so volvox is an example okay so you will find uh, uh, right in colonial form so you will see a lot of uh, okay cells which will be connected to form a colony so this is a colony okay so here and these are all connected all these are cells okay so and this is a parent colony and within the parent colony you may find uh, the daughter colonies also so here okay so so this all is the parent colony and within that parent colony you may find at some regions so there may be the daughter colonies so it gives rise to the daughter colonies okay so this is a daughter colony this is uh, how we see in case of wall box so it's a colonial form next uh, coming to the part of uh, reproduction so reproduction here we see uh, all the modes of reproduction we will see uh, vegetative mode of reproduction so organisms that is uh, algae reproduce uh, by okay vegetative mode of reproduction or by asexual mode of reproduction and even sexual mode of reproduction is seen in this group okay and uh, the vegetative mode of reproduction is by fragmentation by fragmentation so here uh, even if in this case of uh, a filamentous form so if this one breaks up into okay two filaments so each one will develop into a new filament okay right so that is by fragmentation so the colonies or the filamentous forms they may uh, break up and then each of that uh, pieces will may develop into a uh, new colonies or new filamentous uh, structure so uh, such mode of reproduction we call it fragmentation okay and then coming to uh, asexual mode of reproduction in asexual mode of reproduction it is by formation of 
sports so they produce uh, sports right that will be seen in case of uh, asexual mode of uh, reproduction here right <clears throat> and uh, one common example uh, the asexual sports okay so is a juice sport example juice sport so juice sports are asexual sports so they are asexual sports and they are motile okay so they have a uh, okay a uh, flagella which will help them to move so they are motile okay sports so which are formed in asexual mode of uh, reproduction okay right uh, i'll just mention that point here so two spores are motile and upon germination upon germination okay they give rise to plant talus so they give rise to the plant talus okay so the next one coming to the sexual mode of reproduction so this sexual mode of reproduction will be by fusion of gametes so it will be by fusion of gametes okay and these uh, gametes may be uh, similar in size okay or dissimilar in size they may be flagellated or okay non flagellated so we'll see <clears throat> so here gametes are flagellated and similar in size so gametes are flagellated and similar in size so such a uh, type of gametes which are flagellated and similar in size we will find them in eulothrix so you can see them in a in an alga called eulothrix okay then in another case uh, gametes are non flagellated but similar in size so gametes are non flagellated and they are similar in size so here you don't find <coughs> okay flagella so that is the meaning here non flagellated and but they are similar in size you will see them in case of uh, spirogyra so we'll see in case of uh, spirogyra and here um, if you see uh, flagellated which means okay so gametes are motile so gametes are flagellated which means the gametes are motile and if gametes are non flagellated then in that case the gametes are non motile so if uh, flagella is present they will be able to okay move if they don't have flagella they will be not able to move so that is called non motile motile which means uh, uh, okay movable so non movable so in this case the gametes are motile means they are movable okay so now uh, such a uh, fusion of gametes which are similar in size we call okay this as isogamous as isogamous okay right so such fusion uh, between two gametes which are similar in size is called isogamous so if uh, there is a fusion between dissimilar gametes then the condition becomes a uh, aniso so ani uh, which means uh, okay uh, different so we'll see then fusion between two dissimilar 
gametes is called anisogamous. So fusion between two dissimilar gametes is the condition called anisogamous. Okay, and if we see uh, right uh, the fusion of one large non-motile gamete with a small motile gamete, then the condition becomes a uh, okay uh, oogamous. So okay, so that uh, will come under anisogamous uh, form. So here I will just give an example first. Uh, fusion between two uh, dissimilar gametes, uh, the condition which uh, is called right, anisogamous. Example is urodina. So is a is an alga where you find such uh, okay uh, fusion between two dissimilar gametes. Then fusion between okay a large non-motile gamete with uh, a small motile gamete so this is a condition we call it okay oogamous is a condition called oogamous so there you find a large okay non-motile gamete okay and then fusion with a small okay uh, motile gamete so this is small motile gamete that will have flagella okay and this is a large non-motile gamete large non-motile gamete so this uh, fusion between these two is a condition we call it uh, oogamous so such uh, oogamous is seen in case of uh, volvox fucus etc so in these uh, algae you will find the oogamous type of uh, fusion between the gametes right so with this uh, i'll end today's uh, session Right, and in tomorrow's session, we'll see about uh, the classification of uh, algae, right? And then later, uh, after the classification, we will also discuss about the economic importance of uh, algae.